All right. Hello, hello. All right, cool. Looks like I've got mic levels and all. Move my stuff around here. Hey, folks. How are things? It is Friday. There's a Tony in the chat. What's up, Tony? What is up? All right. Oh, there's a nose in the background. You coming through, bro? Come on. Goofy cat. All right. <laughs> Solid one person viewing. Love it. Love it. How's it going, Tony? Need some things arranged. Sick. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. What kind of sick? Probably something one of your kids brought home, eh? Hi, bud. Yes. Get that hand. But hey, that means you can hang out here. Ugh. Yeah, I don't recommend colds. I don't recommend colds either. Fortunately, I have skipped those ever since Philly. Philly got me sick. Been good since then, pretty much. At least more or less. Hi, little cat. Hi. He just knows I'm talking to the internet, so he thought he'd come in. Thought he would come in. All right. It's very slow here on a Friday afternoon. It is 4 o'clock. Today's Friday, yeah? Today's Friday. Good. Good, good. I'm going to come and talk about triangle pin show stuff, show some things I got. A couple of those have already hit the interwebs. But, whoa. Hi, Nose. Yes. Thank you for the help. Knocking pins over. What you knocked over was this one. Kaviko Special. I totally forgot I had this pen. It's been in a case. Still inked. Still works perfectly. It's been a while. So, anyway. Uh, let's see. What did I do with things? There's one thing. There's the other thing. All right, it's going good. Have you tried out your uh, your recent memos, Tony? These guys. Hi. Yes. Thank you. So I tried this one out and then kind of, well, I mean, you probably watched the video on it, but it's uh, pretty much suitable for ballpoint and pencil only. That's kind of the jam with this little guy, but it is cute. It's a fun little notebook. So. Wait, am I? I'm unlisted. Oh, there's the problem. That's weird. Uh, I'm going to stop the stream and come back in just a sec. BRB. going on here I don't know can y'all see me is YouTube is telling me that I am NOT doing a video right now I don't know what's going on
the heck's going on? I'm actually not sure if I'm live or not. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. This is weird. All right, you're going to have to let me know if you can see me because I don't know what's actually going on here. This is weird. Fuzzy? It shouldn't be fuzzy. No. My connection's fine. It's just YouTube is telling me I'm not online. You can see me fine? Good, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> not you. Huh. Huh. You having terrible weather? Yeah, I'm having my weather's fine. My video looks good on my computer. Just YouTube. Ever since YouTube went to um their new like their new setup or whatever, I can't figure out what's going on with it. It's very strange. So it says. It's showing the chat, but it shows that my live stream is offline. This is what this is what I'm seeing. Whoa, it doesn't even show it here? What the hell? I don't even know, man. Something crazy. Alright. Um You and I are good? Good. Okay, good. Well, whatever. I'm gonna say <laughs> Have I gone away, Sandra? Okay, good, good, Look, whatever, we're live. I don't know what's going on here, but it's crazy. Uh, let's see, welcome everybody who's joined me. I don't know what's going on with uh, YouTube, so I'm just gonna ignore it. Wait, now it looks like, ah, okay, it just went live. I don't understand, but whatever, who cares? Who cares? All right, excited for the ghost paper stationery set until you saw the fountain pen usage on it? Ghost Stationery wasn't terrible, actually. I mean, it, was, it wasn't it was brilliant, but it's not terrible. It works okay. Um, you reloaded and it's better now? Good. Glad to hear it, Chewbacca. Yeah, I don't know why it would look all trashy like that. Who knows, man? Who knows? Uh, having terrible weather. I'm Yeah, it's gray, but it's not bad. Twisby 580 ALR worth it over the AL. You know what? I actually haven't seen the ALR or touched it, and I think it's going to be a tactile thing with that pen. The only difference between that and the AL, as far as I can tell, is that it has some ridges on the, the section and in a couple other places, maybe. So, probably not a big deal. I prefer the regular ALR. Uh, I, I mean, I don't love the purple one, but whatever. Uh, refreshed and it went live. Good. Hey, Braden. Hey, Louisa. Hey, Rick. Just Justice, Sandra, Ro Sandra Ross, Phil, Evan, etc. Hey, everybody. All right. Uh, yep. So, whew. Are they giving me live? Hey, glad you can uh, glad you can make it here, Mush Killer. See the triangle sp show spoils. You've already seen them, Sandra. I think. I didn't get a whole lot. I got like. I got like three things is all I got. So, uh, and two of them have already gone up on the interwebs. So, uh, firstly, these little guys. I got this recent memo book. This is three fifty at uh, Van S. She ha she's gave it to me for review, and this one is not great. You're driving down to Raleigh tomorrow for a brief trip, huh? That's cool, man. You gonna show your new diplomat? I'll show my new diplomat. Uh, deliver your nieces to your brother. That sounds like a good plan. So, are they with you now or what? Oh, let's, build, let's change your handle. Fair enough. Only three of some willpower. At least I think that's all I got. One, two, three. What else did I get? Did I get anything else? I think it was just the three things. I didn't really, uh, I went very chill on that show, man. Oh, I didn't get to see the new diplomat. That's true. I didn't get that until like a day or two ago. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's it. I think, 
yeah, that's all the damage, so not too bad. Uh, let's see. Minor physical differences wouldn't show they are substantial. Yeah, I don't think they are. I think it's just uh, ridges on the, the grip section is my understanding. But like I said, I haven't seen one live, so so I don't know. The uh, The Raleigh Pin Show is last weekend, and that's a fun show. It's uh, it's usually pretty laid back, and I think this year was like that too. Uh, it's uh, got 70 tables, which is below average. Usually uh, shows, like a lot of shows will have 100-ish is pretty average, I guess. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. Uh, but like all the people who, I think all the people who are real Twisby vendors just weren't there. Uh, I mean, at this point, that's uh, like Lemur Inc. is king of Twisby right now, I guess. I guess Van Ness might have had some Twisby, but I didn't see any ALRs. Uh, Anderson Pins wasn't there. Mario wasn't there from Toys in the Attic. Um, uh, luxury Brands didn't show up, which I thought was kind of weird because they're local. Coles of London didn't show up with Visconti, which is kind of weird because they're kind of local. But um, Kenro wasn't there. It was it was kind of weird, the people that were missing. But So anyway, no Twisbees. Uh, there weren't really any sailors. All the big sailor... Uh, yeah, Bert wasn't there. Dromgulls didn't come. Uh, it was... Uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. There's some big faces missing, unfortunately. So somebody was asking uh, how to get some sailor at the show. And the answer is like, I don't know. You're just going to have to hope that like Jimmy Dolef has a has some on his table or something because none of the sailor dealers were there it was uh you know there was some weird stuff bert sent bags yeah that's true well bert had the um bert was a, a sponsor so I, you know i don't know if he sent them or if they uh they were just there carrie's and carrie's in cuba well that sounds crazy but cool um yikes is that a is that for the Aurora thing? I saw some pictures of some people in Aurora in uh, in some like destination for some Aurora like anniversary event, but I haven't seen Carrie in any of those pictures. Just Brian and uh, Dan Smith. So I don't know. Oh, Carrie's on vacation in Cuba. Oh, fancy. Uh, yeah, 240 car. Uh, Kalen is also he was also going on vacation with his girlfriend uh, down to I don't know Costa Rica or something cool. So. Yeah, a lot of people on vacation, but anyway, Triangle Show was a fun show. A lot of people came down. Lots of the New York crew came down, which was cool. I don't get to see the New York tr crew a whole lot, so that's always fun. Uh, some of the DC crew came down as well, so that was good. Sandra was there. She had a house full of guests. I'm sure that was that was fun. I just saw carrying a live video from Farney's today. I don't know. Didn't see it. I've been uh, I've been like. Working on school stuff most of the day, and working on some product stuff for the for the channel. No, you don't need to be back there, bud. I I got restocked on all my rickshaw goods, so this is a whole bunch of rickshaws. So that was cool. Texas re represented. Yep, David was able to show up from uh, Yosarian on the interwebs. Um, so that was cool. This is uh. These are back in stock, so if you missed these the first time around, I'm not going to have... I don't think I'm going to have any more of these made. There's only like five left. So that's that. I've got six pin cases. I've got pin trays. Uh, InkyD.com will have those soon. Just a matter of getting product shots up. Um, Audrey and I brought our uh, our little our polymer clay pen rests to the show. These are fun things. I've been trying to take some, uh, some shots of these. It's kind of hard to do that stuff. Yeah, Jesse Justice was there. It was cool, man. Uh, it was good. It's a good show. Good show. You know, I thought we had Pin Club this week, but I guess it's next week because they said it was Father's Day. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, may or may not be here. Briscoe's Delicious. That's true. Uh, Yosarian brought a bunch of brisket, like several, many pounds of brisket, uh, and it was delicious. I've uh, I kept some of the fat trimmings for Scraggles, and I throw them in with her food every once in a while. Carrie was in Cuba for his birthday. Now he's at Farney's. That's quite the turnaround, man. <laughs> Yikes. So, all right. Let's uh, switch over to the other camera because this cat is in my face here. Let's see uh, some, some triangle stuff. So, first thing was this guy. These are those, uh, those recent memo ghost pads. This is too dim. Let me get some, let me get some more light on the subject here. There we go. It's a little better. Just got a clamping down a light right now. Looked better before. I don't really know what's going on, but whatever. Whatever, man. There we go. All right. 
So there's the, the recent memo. These are cute little checkbook size papers. I did a review on these earlier this week. Uh, I'm going to do some more paper reviews because they're, uh, they're pretty fun and I've got a bunch of notebooks that need to be shown off. Uh, the only problem with these is that they are not at all fountain pen friendly. They are uh, uh, prone to bleeding and feathering and uh, when I say bleeding I mean like all the way through like onto the next page in some cases so that's not great. So anyway these are good if you're not going to use fountain pens on them but otherwise not so great. Then I got some ghost paper. This is a thing from um, from Van S as well. She had a bunch of interesting paper there, so I got a few pieces. Uh, and the cool thing about ghost paper is this thing. I don't know if you can actually see them or not. I can't really see them in the shot. Uh, but there are, you can see there, if you look carefully, there are embossed lines in here, debossed lines, depending on which side you're looking at. Uh, instead of printed ones, but it works pretty well with the with the fountain pens fill I wouldn't worry about too much if you're using like a giant nib or something very very wet You might get a little bit of a problem, but you know the only one that I really had a problem with was this um, This mini mule with uh, the Monteverde horizon blue. I don't really know why but a little bit of a problem there But everything else seems pretty okay. It's a little it's got a little bit of a texture to it So it's not perfectly smooth, but it's not terrible Yeah, I like big nibs too, but like I don't know. This one was a double broad sig and it worked okay. I wouldn't use it with a uh, folded nib or anything. And wet nibs? Yeah, maybe not for you then. Stick to something Stick to something that can handle the handle the power of the Phil Olin pens. There. You like textured paper? Yeah, you might like it. Back from the bank, you have quarters for laundry. Congratulations. Uh, and then, the only pen I actually bought this weekend was this one. And it was at auction. I uh, I was I was pretty tame during the auction. There weren't uh, there were several things I liked, but a lot of it was going very expensive for some reason. But this is a Waterman Kareen in uh, in a gunmetal finish, and I've actually wanted a Waterman Kareen for a very long time, like at least high school. But the problem with these pens is that they tend to be very expensive. You can see some of the fun details here, like this little slope here at the bottom. It's got this beautiful uh, articulated clip, which is nice. There we go. Hey, Jonathan, welcome. How are you doing, man? I hope you're okay. So many end users. Yeah, that's true. A lot of people are willing to pay uh, pay big money, but uh, you know, uh, yeah. Poor Jonathan, man. He uh, <laughs> he came to the. I'm just going back to my face. Jonathan Brooks, in case you didn't know, came to the show after having wisdom tooth surgery and was still pretty messed up with from that, and then got food poisoning. Good job, Jonathan. Well done. Uh, so I hope you and uh, and Aiden are both, um, you know, both doing well after that. Finally on solid foods again. Yikes, man. Yikes. Anyway, these uh, these Kareens are great pens, uh, and I've really I've wanted one for a long time, but. Uh, was an end user? Oh, as opposed to somebody who's just buying stuff to sell on their own. Sometimes if people are just buying stuff to sell, um, like a vendor, then they'll um, uh, they won't pay as much because they gotta have some margin to make profit. Whereas end users like us tend to pay a little more, cause, or be willing to pay more because you know we're not gonna sell it. We want to use the thing. Uh, but anyway, these tend to be pretty expensive, uh, especially this gunmetal one, which I actually didn't even have written down on my sheet, and in fact didn't even check out in the case because I thought it was going to be too expensive. But um, I got it at a, what I think is a pretty darn good price um, for these, and uh, so I'm quite happy with it. These the the Misrip MRSRP on these is like 400 bucks, and you find them in stores for about 320. So I paid way less than that, so that's nice. Um, one of the pretty things about this pen is not just the finish on the outside, uh, but also, and it's a snap cap. It's got a very nice snap cap, actually. Never worry about that thing coming off. Um, is they have this nib, which is all sort of inlaid nib. Could have gotten the whale shark pen. I kind of I wanted the whale shark pen, but uh, the uh, the whale shark pen went for like over retail. I think I was looking up what it should go for. And I think Nick paid like 10 bucks too much for it, but whatever, he was having a good time. Uh, so anyway, this is a, a really pretty pen. I really, well, I found some ink. <laughs> the breather hole on this pen is right here, and I've been waving it around a bit, and I guess I just got tired of that. Uh, and I forget what ink I put in this. It's one of the blacks, obviously. I want to say it's probably, um, probably obsidian, the Lamy Crystal Obsidian. 
But uh, this pin also has a uh, Curse of Italic on it. It started out life as a stub, and that's pretty cool. But uh, <laughs> it got turned into a, a Curse of Italic. And uh, so it's a little bit persnickety about writing angle. Let me find a piece of paper. I'll give it a little writing sample action. Um, what can I write on? I don't keep a lot of that stuff right at hand, but this will work. Yeah, come on out. There we go. I really like these little half sheets. I think these are fun. Welcome back. Yeah, thanks, Jeremy. Uh, let's see. Doing better. That's good. Could have gotten the whale shark. It's true. Nick deeply regretted it in the morning. Well, I'd buy it from him at a slight loss. <laughs> didn't, mind, didn't mind the spin the bill and you got the hospital bill? Yeah, I guess. Dang. I guess. All right. So, um, this pen has very nice broad downstrokes, uh, and then the cross strokes are extremely thin. But if I'm not paying attention to how I write, if I tend to turn in a little bit, and it was like kind of, I don't know, kind of, I just like dug into the paper there. So, this has been, uh, I don't know, it's a little bit of a learning experience. I'm going to have to get used to it. But uh, I, I like the feel of it when I have it at the right angle. Man, if I get off the right angle just a little bit, it gets a little crazy. So anyway, that's going to be a little bit of a learning experience. We'll see how it goes. And if I end up, I really hate it, I'll either uh, sell it and get a new section. Or, uh, yeah, a lot of the auction pins had italic grinds on them. That's true. And... I kind of forgot this had an italic grind. I would have rather just stayed a stub. I think that would have been nicer. Uh, but I can probably find another section if I have to, or just get Audrey to fix it up. But it does have a custom grind on it from Modisha, so maybe I'll be able to, I don't know, sell this one and get a different grind, or sell the section and get a different section. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But that's one. So that's, uh, I think this pen is beautiful, and uh, I'm glad I got it. It feels very nice in the hand, and I dig it. So here's the uh, here's the new one. That I got just not too long ago. It's one of our, it's one of our little custom pen rests. It goes so nicely with this pen that I just keep this on my desk. This is the Diplomat Aero Volute. This is that new one with the hydro dip finish. Yeah, we missed hanging out with you too, Jesse. That would have been fun. Um, the hydro dip finish is pretty darn cool. I, I've been describing it as that thing where you like dip it through the water full of uh, full of lacquer or whatever, but I'm actually not 100% sure that's how they do it. So I'm going to stop saying that until I talk to somebody specifically, but uh, it looks really pretty in person, and it's much glossier than the rest. So like, here's the matte silver one, and then you've got, uh, this is the blue, and here's a, here's a factory finish. But uh, this one definitely has a, has a very different sort of finish to it, and uh, it feels very nice. It's very, very smooth. It's more or less how they do it. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought it was. Does it have a seam? Uh, I mean, it has a seam right here. Uh, and it's a snap cap, so like you have to not pay too much attention to where the, the swirls line up. They don't quite line up, interestingly enough, but I do like arrows, Jesse. I don't know if you've heard about it, but I do. Black furniture looks so much better on the arrows. Yeah, I like the black furniture a lot. I think that's pretty cool. Although the silver on the blue looks perfect too, so I'm not going to complain about that stuff. Um, this one has a few extra details that the others don't have. So like, um, this one says Diplomat on the clip, and it says Germany around the back of the finial, because usually that is here around the waist of the pen at the bottom of the cap, and they just don't have that. You've tried it, and it's hard on a pen, huh? I mean, they call it Hydro Dip, so I'm, I'm guessing that's what they do. Some of this, though, when you look really closely, has like a, like some of the gray almost looks like it was printed. So I don't know. I'm, that might have been like from the Hydro Dipping itself, but like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Then it's got like a lacquer over the top, so it's not going to rub off, but it seems pretty cool. We have a blue, violet, and the Volute. Yeah, nice. I, uh, oh, do the swirls break along the length? No. No, they don't. It's, um... It's all one piece. Like, there's no, there's no seam. There's no like stutter or thing. It wasn't wrapped. That's for sure. Um, it wasn't wrapped. It was definitely, definitely did something else. But you know, it has that great uh, diplomat cap action. So, did you end up buying any of the points pins diplomat samples? Uh, I didn't actually. I didn't get any of those. Nope. I didn't see them when I went over there. So, and I didn't ask about them. I, probably that's the deal. But. Um, 
you don't dip just right, you can break the pattern. Oh, I see. Um, I would bet that they probably put something through the pin before they put the finials on, so they can put it on a rod or something and dip like that. Uh, but I don't know. It came out really pretty. This is more expensive than the rest of the arrows, um, even with the, just the, the steel nib. Uh, and I think it's probably because of that hydro dipping thing. But that one, I think, retails at 230 something. Um, so, Blue and the Violet are nice. Lily is Jeff Blove. It is. I think it, I think it really is. Uh, it's just a, it's a gorgeous pen. Uh, no, uh, no regrets. Uh, I got that one from Bert Oser at uh, Bertram's Inkwell. He gave me a bit of a discount, but um, yeah. Uh, but that's, uh, so hey, thanks Bert. I appreciate it. Go to Bertram's Inkwell if you want to get one of those. He gave me a little bit of a discount, but I did pay my own actual money. So um, Arrow Pins was in a case behind the table. Oh, well, there you go. Too bad. Uh, but yeah, I can, I, I mean, I've got a few. I've got almost every color, Evan, except for brown, I think. Brown and red. Survive the auction without you. Yeah, I had um, I had Santiago on one side handing beers out, and I had Kimberly on the other side uh, occasionally bidding on stuff and also sometimes writing letters. So, yeah, it was okay. For some reason, the diplomats aren't cheaper in Germany. Or in uh, Germany. Huh. Well, I mean, kind of good. Like, I'm kind of glad about that. I, I really don't like the, uh, the thing where they make everything, like, way more expensive for the U.S. market. Like the Japanese pens do a lot of times. It's just, it's kind of annoying. It's also really hard on the American vendors because then they have to compete with the, like the German vendors or the Japanese vendors. Lamy's a lot cheaper, huh? Yeah, there's, um, yeah. Yeah, Lamy's like that for sure. So like if I want to get, I can get a Lamy 2000 with like a real fancy nib, like the, you know, obliques and all this kind of stuff. Were there many oversized items? Uh... I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. Had both shades of brown on the samples. Father brought the lighter brown from there with a gold nib. Oh. Well, that's cool. I uh, I mean, the brown's cool, but I mean, I've got enough other colors that I'm okay for now. But I appreciate it. Um, but <laughs> actually, the auction at Triangle is kind of notorious for. Um, I have a sheet actually down here. Let's see. Oversized. Uh, got a lot of things marked uncommon and rare. There were quite a few things with stub nibs, and sometimes that pushed the prices up way high. But, um, uh, you know, other things went for, for good deals, but some of this stuff was like really expensive. Like, all the first few things were like 500 and something dollars. And you just kind of kept going like that. Um, there was a Waterman 100 year pen that went for 675. Like, whoa. I don't really know why. Uh, probably because it was a factory medium metallic, but still, Whew. that is expensive. There's an ASC that went up to 900 bucks. Yeah. Manu was really, uh, he's the guy who runs Ar Armano, uh, the ASC brand, Armon Armano Simoni Club. And he was really, uh, really bidding up stuff that was, you know, that were his brand, which was like, I don't love that tactic. Keeps the prices high, I guess, but it's not great. The guy who picked up his label double broad but actually had a .08 CI. Oh, that's too bad. I need to take a double broad and then, oh, yuck. Need to polish the sailor. Oh yeah, you got a nice sterling sailor, didn't you? Yeah, that's cool, man. Uh, I liked it, Sandra. That was a good. That was a good get. I think. Oh, light rain stopping. Cool. Not a cool move in an auction. Yeah, I don't think it's a cool move in an auction either, but. I mean, whatever, it's his money. I guess he can do whatever he wants with it. But it's not, I don't think it's real cool to, to bid people up. I mean, I, I think partly it was probably to like, he wanted to keep the price high on his, uh, on his, um, <laughs> that's what she said. Uh, yeah, he did end up with most of them. There were a couple of other people that got, um, Duokar got a couple, but he had to pay through the nose for them. So, so that's, you know, but he's like, oh, I got to keep the prices high. But like, a few pens sold at an auction in Raleigh are not going to, like, crash his retail prices. I don't know, man. Whatever. So it's generally regarded as kind of bad form. Maybe a thing not to do. Now, I'm wondering why the auctioneers didn't inspect the pens and realize there were grinds on a whole lot of them. Uh, I think most of them were, were, actually, uh, were actually noted. Let me see. Did that... Um... See, Nikaya's. Um, 
Which one did you get? Did you get the chinkin? No, I thought, I think, um, uh, I think Catherine ended up with that. Get the Siratami, a pinnace with an 18k double broad. Yeah, that one was not, was not mentioned. That's too bad. Yeah, the Shiro. Yeah, yeah. There were a couple that they didn't catch. So, like, the Franklin Kristoff lot that they had at the end said it was a, a 45 or something. And it was actually an 03. I mean, you know, there are a few mistakes like that, but yeah, it's okay. It mostly was fine. I, like, I ended up with a CI because I didn't think I was going to get the pin. And it was like Carl was the only person I was actually bidding against, I think, on this pin. And uh, he decided to let me have it, which is very nice of him. Like, Carl Seidel's a good dude. I like that guy. So. M23. Oh. A23 wasn't labeled. It had an italic, huh? Yeah, I didn't even look at the A23. I've already got one of those. If I'd known it had an italic, well, I wouldn't have wanted the italic. I just don't do italics very well. But, I mean, I guess free grind, but yeah. Yeah, you got to check those things out before the auction. I've gotten burned a couple of times that way because I just didn't look carefully or something, but... It's kind of on us. Carl and David are bidding on a lot of the same lots. <laughs> yeah, they were. They were sitting next to each other doing it, too. Yep, that's true. That's true. Don't you always get free grinds? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I happen to live with a nib doctor, so that's pretty, that's pretty nice for me. Um, yeah. Oh, the other thing I got at the auction, that reminds me is uh, I got a grind done on this pen. Uh, this is a uh, Jonathan Brooks pen, and uh, Mark Backus. <laughs> Mark Backus was at the show, and he wasn't busy on Sunday uh, in the afternoon. So I went over and said, hey, Mark, I want you to do something with this pen. And so he gave me sort of an oblique, uh, an oblique uh, stub, basically. Let's see if I can. Hi, Clipsy. There it is. You can probably see enough contrast there, but yeah. Pretty mild oblique stub, and this one's really nice. So, uh, yeah, that's the other thing I got. I think that's it. Those are the only things I did were those. But, yep, that one. Had a friendly good game handshake at the end. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, Carl's a nice guy. I've never had a problem with Carl. I've known that guy for a long time. Seems like a good dude. Hi, Clipsy. Is there something you want? You want to be on the desk? Ah, there we go. There. You can make all the terrible noises you want. Sounds like a great grind. It is. Mark Backus is really good. Uh, I just kind of went over there and um, and said, hey, put a grind on this. Do whatever you want. Whatever you're feeling like. So that's what he did. Um, usually Audrey will do my grinds for me, but Mark's really good. And uh, so I wanted to get him to wanted to get him to do something for me, too. I've only got a couple of things with his uh, his grinds on him. So so that's cool. My cat. Here's a cat tail. Here's a... Here's a cat. <laughs> I picked her up four inches, and that's the sound she makes. This cat hates being picked up. It's her least favorite thing in the universe. <laughs> there. Had Mark tweak the Nakaya for you? Yeah, nice. Nice. Should have had him tweak the Kung Fu SM. Uh, yeah, my soft medium needed some work, too. Audrey, I didn't write like it at all until I had Audrey work on it, so... Yeah. Those soft, the soft mediums are real nice once you get them going, but I didn't love it. Is yours kind of scratchy? Because mine definitely was. It was scratchy and kind of dry, and now it's great. But that's a, that's a benefit I have for living with a nib doctor. On the other hand, I decided to try to mess with the pen today, and I made it wor or the other day, and I made it worse. So what are you gonna do? Looking forward to get your Blade Turk when your mule arrives from the USA. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, the Blade Turk is a really nice, uh, really nice nib. Spinning star is scratchy on the upstroke. Yep, same as mine. Uh, it's because the, the tines are not quite polished on the inside or some weird thing. Um, Audrey had to mess with it for a little while, but once you get it tweaked, it can be real good. Mark realigned your sailor nib at the show. You need to get an actual grind from the next time of the show he's at. Yep, totally should. Totally should. Realignments and stuff I'm not worried about, but I decided to start messing with this. Um, what did I even do with it? Now ah, here it is. Um, I've got this Twisby. This is a Twisby 700R, and uh, I got a 1.1 nib on it. And I like, I really like the the like the the form and the the, the comfort of a 700R. 
or the 700 for that matter, but I have never had a good nib on one of these things. I always just take the Twisby nib off, throw it in a drawer, and put on like a Franklin Kristoff or some other kind of Yovo. Um, they fit just fine. But um, my Twisby nibs on 700s always are terrible, and so I decided to take some sandpaper to it, or mac micro mesh, and uh, now it's worse. So, cool. I'll be giving this to Audrey, so maybe she can, maybe she can uh, undestroy it for me. That would be real nice. But, yep. At least I only messed with the nib that's uh, cheap and I didn't like to begin with. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know why, how I could have made it worse, but it just kind of is. So, whatever. I can't see anything wrong with it. It just doesn't write well. Yeah, I know. I tried to fix it now. It's worse. I, look, I've smoothed plenty of pens, and they've come out fine. But that one just, uh, I don't know, sucked. Uh, what size do I put on? It's number six. The uh, <laughs> And now it's worse. Uh, yeah, that's what I, I actually sent Audrey a text when I messed it up. I'm like, I just tried to fix a nib and now it's worse. There's only a, uh, <laughs> there's only one nib doctor in this house. That's for sure. But yeah, the 700 actually isn't a weird size. It's a number six. So it's, it was, it's fine. Um, the, the other ones are weird. So they're like a five and a half or some weird thing. Pablo at FBN sells the Yovo BF nibs that fit the Twisby feed perfectly. What's a Yovo BF? I don't know what that means, but. Yeah, I haven't had any problems with these. I think I've got a Knox nib on my other one. It's like one that I got from iPen Store. iPen Store? X Fountain Pens is what it used to be called. I forget what it is now. Birmingham. That's what it's called now. You can always make a nib worse. Apparently that's true. Um, you could get a Jim Rouse nib and a not-so-liked pen model. I forget what the difference is. He's paying as he wants. Yeah, I think it's supposed to have a slightly different curvature at the, at the collar where it goes on the feed, but I haven't had any problems with it. Yovo BF feeds are more flat. Oh, could be. Yeah, I remember there was a difference, but yeah, I don't remember what it was. You know, six nibs are kind of curved. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I haven't had any problem with it, but it could just be blind luck. So, yeah, anyway. Ooh. Sorry. Ooh. Yawning already. It's only 441. But anyway, so yeah, that was my uh, that was my triangle pin show haul. Decent little haul, just a few things. Uh, but uh, I go to pin shows really just to hang out with people I don't see very often and not to buy stuff necessarily. So worked out just fine, working as intended. Working as intended. And now it's going to be a while since my next pin show. I'm not going to go to St. Louis. It's too expensive to get to. For whatever reason, plane tickets are like 500 bucks from here. So that's a no. That's a no go. Um, but, um, yeah, have I tried the beer yet? I did try the beer. That was the other thing I got at the pin show was, uh, Bijoual here, <laughs> uh, gave me a, a four pack of stouts and, um, yeah, I did try it. It's, uh, it's like, it's hoppier than I was expecting for a stout kind of weirdly, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Definitely a, definitely a good drinking beer. Um, going to SF? I am and DC. Oh, goodness. So DC will be my next show, and then right after that, San Francisco, and then right after that, Dallas, and then nothing until Philly, I think. So, yeah, thank you very much for the four beers there. Am I going to my local local Pelican Hub? Yeah, I usually do. Um, it's just kind of an expanded... Are we putting you to sleep? No, I don't know. I, I don't know what it was. I haven't slept well the last couple of nights. Going to bed super early, getting up... Or super late, getting up early. It's uh, It's no good. But, uh, yeah, I'll be going to that. It's kind of an expanded version of our pin club. So, um, you know, it's fine. They give you free ink. That's always fun. But yep, I'll go. I'll go. Residual pin show exhaustion. I think that's what it is. Um, definitely Monday and Tuesday. was. Ooh. That and just, like, constant talking instead of breathing. That does it, too. But, yeah, I usually get a little bit of a pin show hangover for, like, a week after a pin show. This pin show, I like behaved myself at. I wasn't out super late or anything, so. so anyway, that's all I know. Here's a cat purring. Pelican have the reason why I don't buy the ink of the year. Same. Yeah, yeah, I never, uh, I don't buy the ink of the year because uh, I get it at the Pelican Hub for free. That's true. And now there are going to be a lot more Pelican Hubs, right? They're... Uh, they're 
you know, really expanding those, I think. So that's cool. Although I guess they upped the minimum number or something. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you did get stuck on the highway for a long time. Yikes. <laughs> did you have a, a hub master not show up and keep all the ink for themselves? That's bad times. They upped the number to maintain a hub. They upped it to like, what, five or six or something? Like, it's not very many. Uh, what is the Pelican Hub? Um, so Pelican Hub is this thing that Pelican, the pin company, started doing, I don't know, a few years ago anyway. And um, the uh, uh, the idea is like for people to get together in some city, uh, you need five people, seven to keep an old location. Oh, interesting. Huh. They're like, you got to grow it. You got to grow your thing. Um, yeah, so anyway, Pelican Hub is for a bunch of people to get together and like talk about their pens and show Pelicans and they give away uh, some stuff that Pelican sends out for uh, for the hubs. Usually it requires like somebody to uh, to like organize them, a hub master. Uh, they got to find a place and all that kind of thing, but then they get sent a bunch of Pelican swag and you give it out to people and you like hang out and talk about Pelicans, really. It's not a big deal, but it's uh, it's fun to do and get together, especially if you're in a place that doesn't have a regular pin club meeting. Um, it's pretty nice. You bought a label maker? Yeah, I did. I also got this during the show, so I guess it counts. Got myself a label maker, uh, and I'm a big fan of this thing. It's kind of rad. Um, made some labels. It's, uh, yeah, I like it for anyone interested to sign up in advance yeah yeah you go to uh let me go find the pelican hub link uh why not the wireless one um i don't know this is like 20 bucks and uh the wireless one you have like seems like kind of a pain in the butt right i saw where pelicans all the loggers get free and get purchase one of the year yeah yeah should look for a hub let's see Pelican's Perch, Pelican Hub. Um, yeah, right, Pelican only sends the Hub super easy. Yeah, I I thought I remember you having some trouble connecting or having a, I don't know, like whatever. This one you just type in the thing you want. Oh, it's pretty good. But also it's only like 20 bucks. I don't know what the wireless one costs. Let's see, do I have a link for these things? Come on now. Registration period, the microsite, registration, here we go. I'll put this in the chat. There we go. Uh, if you can click on that link, that will take you there. Ran a label table and paid, oh, 29, well, okay. That's, uh, that's pretty good too. <laughs> For an extra 10 bucks, maybe I would have. But, um, eh, whatever, this is fine. You're gonna miss our hub this year? Oh, that's too bad. A lot of no shows and supply to school with the rest of the inks. Yeah, that's good. Um, our, uh, our hub master takes the extras and gives them to like pens for kids or something to make samples out of, I think. But, uh, yeah, so go there and actually, that reminds me, I need to register for my Pelican hub. The, uh, uh, contact details, that, that, next. Confirm my personal datas. Well, there you go. Uh, Two-stage process. Yeah, it's different from last year. Last year, you just like selected a city or something from a drop down. This year they're sending me an email. Looks like it is. Firefox, why are you broken? Um, select option, let's see. Huh. Streamlabs did some things and now Firefox doesn't work. Um, same type. Now try. Really? Huh. 
Weird. Are you trying to avoid bots or something? Yeah, it could be. It should be not freaking. It does have to be expensive. That's true. That is true. Huh. Well, I don't know why Firefox is broken, but that's frustrating. I guess we'll deal with that later, but I can't show you any interweb stuff because it's dead. Womp womp. So, anyway. Anyway, sign up for a Pelican Hub. It's good. Yeah, I didn't even know there was a slobs update, but I can tell there's some differences because, like, um, for whatever reason, my desk camera over here was flipped. I don't know why the video is flipped. Uh, my little slider buttons for volume are all different. It's uh, it's weird. Some weird stuff, but it's the way it goes, man. Try to limit fake signups. Yeah. No long distance traveling by mid-September. Ah, I see. It's uh, it's long distance for you, huh? Figured you'd have a, a guinea pig one. Or is that itself long distance? Confirm my data. Hell of progress. Well, if they would just tell me that that was a thing. Select country. Uh, I will select the country of the United States. Select city. Uh, let's see, Raleigh. PQR. There we go. Uh, I do not want to see. I intend to participate. Um, I don't want to be a hub master. Finish. Okay. Okay, good. We're good. Um, guinea pig hubs at two and a half hours away from home. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah, that'll be a bit far, probably. We should go to a hub this year. It's the exact same day as move-in day for Seattle University. Ah, well, congrats on going to college. Condolences on, uh, on uh, missing the hub. Wait, the hubs aren't until, like, middle of September. You don't move in until mid-September? That's weird. Our college is starting, like, mid-August. Very strange. Huh. Yeah, that's real weird. Yeehaw, indeed. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what that's about. It's very strange. Do you have some weird thing like a, a, a quarters system or something going on there? Because that's, that's very strange. Seattle University, huh? I'm not familiar. Had to wait until the monsoons are done. <laughs> oh, it's on quarters. Quarters are weird. I don't really understand quarters. I was talking to Braden about quarters not too long ago, and it sounds very strange. I'm glad I don't have to teach on them. I mean, I basically do, but still. Jesuit tradition, huh? Catholic University, it looks like. Interesting. Go home and enjoy the beautiful weather. Yeah, enjoy the beautiful weather, man. Also, what you have between summer and high school? I had a very abbreviated summer that year. Yeah, that's usually the way it goes. <laughs> that's, I, that's the way it was for me, too. Because uh, I, I want to say college started before summer, but quarters are pretty nice. All right. I just wouldn't want to try to plan a quarters version of a course. It seems like it'd be strange. But I don't know. I've never had to try it. You can't have cars as freshmen. I think our school let, let people have cars, but yeah, this freshman no car thing is pretty common, actually. Your doormates out online in advance is just if we go to a local hub as an icebreaker. Yeah, I think definitely the thing Aiden ought to do in order to make friends and uh, seem super cool is to uh, get all his friends to go to a fountain pen event on the first day of college, on college move-in day. That'll be good. <laughs> That'll be good. So, yeah. Well, congrats on going to college, man. It's always good. Even if you have some weird, uh, some weird quarter system. UMBC freshmen have cars. They had to park them in the satellite lot. Yeah, we had to do that too. Of course, a lot more students at the college without overstuffing class. At least it's the claim. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm kind of kind of dubious about that assertion. I mean, they could also just hire more faculty without or like 
without overwhelming the faculty they have. It seems kind of weird. Like either you have fewer students or you have more faculty, but switching to quarters just means that like the faculty have more work to do or something. I don't know. seems weird, but like I said, I haven't done that system, so I don't know how it works. Maybe the faculty gets some time off too. I don't, I don't know, man. Retaining uh, from my class notes is much better if you write in fountain pen. I think it's true, but also like hard to be cool and like talk about fountain pens to people just out of high school. Most people Aiden's age are not doing fountain pens. Not at all. So sad truths. Sad truths. One day. <laughs> Like the mini masters, yeah. oh mini masters. Yeah, I don't like mini master teaching. Mini masters sucks. It sucks. Uh, hey, Greece, what's up, Marios? Read I heard somewhere that you physically write down your notes, retain a lot more. Yeah, there's been a bunch of studies that say that kind of thing. They're usually pretty small, but um, yeah, those studies seem right. Mini masters are rough. Yeah, yeah, they're rough. If you're gonna do like, like maybe a math mini master, maybe, but like a writing intensive mini master or you know science mini masters, that's that's rough stuff. It's like doing summer school all the time, and that sucks for teachers and it sucks for students too. So I don't know. I did a mini master this last semester and it was a little bit rough. So you know, whatever. It does get you out faster, I guess, but yikes, yikes. So, one classmate in high school used fountain pens too. That was fun. Nice. Uh, two and a half years to get you. Oof. That sounds, uh, it sounds bad, Evan. Sounds bad. Sounds bad. So. What do I teach? Oh, uh, I'm a philosophy professor is what I teach, Jeremy. Had to take your time with the classes and rush. Yeah, me too. And it, it leaves more time open for things and like perfecting and rewriting. Like, look, realistically, most students just give you, they just turn in their first draft of any paper anyway. So I guess it doesn't matter, but uh, they hardly ever do the reading. So like maybe mini masters is fine, but still I'm really shaking the camera today. I gotta reset that thing. But yep. Yep. So all right, folks, it's been an hour, and I am, I can see, like, yawning a little bit, so maybe I take a nap. We'll see how I, see if I can talk Audrey into one. It's not usually all that hard, but she's been working hard and not feeling super great today, so uh, if you've got final questions, then uh, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to call it. Nap time for Mike? It might be. Also, maybe pizza time, but a nap, a nap might happen. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Let's do a snacks debate again. No, get out. <laughs> Pizza snap. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. Pizza. You gotta go too. All right, man. See you later, Aiden. See you later. Snacks debate. I know there's a lot of peanut hate. I've got my dry roasted peanuts here. Not a sponsor, but I liked it. All right. All right, folks, that's it. I will be uh, back next week, maybe this weekend a little bit, with a bunch more uh, cool videos and stuff. Uh, also, since you're sticking around now, all 39-ish of you so far at the moment, um, let's see, let's check out the viewer count again. Uh, let me know if there's a particular thing you'd like to see reviewed. I've got a list going of things that uh, I haven't reviewed and I should. So I'm going to be getting to some of the more uh, like widely searched stuff like we were talking about a couple of weeks ago uh, that I just never got around to reviewing. Um, so uh, if there's a particular thing you want reviewed or if there's a particular like instructional type video, I like to do instructional videos in the summers because uh, I have a bunch of time to like put those together. Uh, I, I was cruising the, the fountain pen Reddit a little while ago and uh, people were asking like how to fill a pen and things like that. And I started typing out an answer and I was like, this would take too long. I just need to make a video. So if there are things like that, that I wouldn't think of as instructional video needs, uh, shoot me an email at, uh, uh, am I up there anymore? Oh, I don't have my email up there anymore. Anyway, whatever. 
uh, how to make your nib worse. I can do that. Just take it and slam it against the desk. Um, or uh, Mike at inkdependence.com. That is me. And uh, I will see y'all next time how to dismantle a pen that's working perfectly fine. I mean, I can do that. Um, I do that a bunch. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't usually destroy them. Just this poor nib. I mean, look, it sucked to begin with. I only made it marginally worse, but still not better all right so shoot me an email at mike at inkdependence.com if there's things you want to see reviewed talked about or uh, instructions given and i'll uh, do my best to like fulfill requests all right that's it see you later peace out